Hi, I'm Painter Master Karen Boniker, and I'd like to introduce you to another Paint Like Bob Ross tutorial. And today we're going to be doing Campfire, one of Bob's paintings. And we'll have a lot of fun with exploring some new brushes and learning some new techniques. We're going to set the size of this image to 11 by 17 or 17 by 11 I should say at 150 ppi and that's a good size to work at for this type of painting and getting everything that we need to get in. So let's get started. I'm going to clear this canvas out now and a quick way to do that is select Control A or Command A and Backspace and that will clear your canvas out and you're ready to start. One of the first things we want to do here is we want to create our background and tone the canvas so we have something to start with. So we're going to be picking colors that are real similar to how we can build on the painting and build the values and build the dramatic look of the campfire. So we'll start off with maybe choosing a uh, darker orange value here but I think what we're going to do is come over to our little color wheel and go a little bit darker on that value. That way we start to create some nice contrast when we start putting in those really light values. And right about there should be should be good. And then a shortcut to fill your canvas is Command F or Control F and we'll just fill that with the current color and select OK. And we're going to be doing most of our painting here on the canvas layer. However, you're free to work on uh, additional layers if you feel you need a little bit of extra security as you're working along because that allows you to delete the layer if uh, you run into problems. So we're going to begin by working from the back of the painting and forward and we're simply going to start by uh, choosing our campfire brush pack and we're going to start off with the brushes called the leafy trees and for this we're going to want to go um, a little bit darker in value because this is where we're going to start building up uh, some of the the heaviest contrast in the piece and with this brush I'm going to work with a really dark uh, value here and we're just going to start to create a little bit of texture uh, in the painting and you're just going to want to apply this more towards the top of the painting you can see that this brush has some color variability mixed in with it. So you're getting some nice color changes and values along with that. If you use very, uh, very soft detail, uh, you'll get a very small brush tip. And firmer pressure, you're going to get a little larger brush. Okay, so we're going to be putting a little bit more, a little firmer pressure on this brush as we work through it. And I'm just kind of setting up where I'm going to want my trees to be. I'm going to even go a little darker there. I like to go nice and dark up in the corners. And anytime you're moving away from your main light source, and we'll follow that rule as we go through the painting, we want things to be a little darker. change brushes now and go to the fire tree brush and again we're going to sample color and you can use your alt key to sample color from your keyboard and again we're going to go very dark in the corners here and again we're, what we're doing here is setting up those light and dark values so we can start filling things in and making a real impact with our with our color this brush is fire trees and now what I'm going to do is start using it strategically in certain spots where I want to have a few highlights and you'll notice we're getting right to those very very bright 
colors and anywhere I'm envisioning my campfire being right around in this area here so I'm already starting to think about where those lightest values are going to be and I'm going to pick up some dark here and run this about the place where I think I want to start putting some additional foliage and trees sampling color and getting a good variety of color going on here. And always lightest at the point of light. And as we move away from that light source, then your colors will get softer and muter, darker. We're gonna to move to the two inch blender and we're just going to begin very, very soft pressure here and blending out some of these edges and creating that area where we're going to be. And so we'll blend out from the sides here and just start to create a little bit of a feeling of land plane right in this area here. Very soft pressure. You don't need to use a lot of pressure and you can go back into the distance here and do a little bit of soft blending just to push that area back a little bit. We can build on that later too. Softer at the corners. And this will just drag that beginning of your land and where about where you want to place your fire and some more trees. We'll now pick up the brush called Lodge Pole, and we're going to go with a nice dark value. Um, again, you can sample color, you know, but make sure you've got a really dark value there. Uh, a good choice would be the Van Dyke Brown from the uh, color set option. And here we're going to use that brush to create the look of some trees in the distance here. So we're just going to pull in a few look of trees and those can the trunks basically you can let those just fade right into this area here and I'm also going to sketch in lightly where I want to apply my first large tree and that's going to be the old leaning tree The next brush we'll choose is the Oil Brush Texturizer, and we're going to use that to build our main tree in the foreground area here. We'll go ahead and sample a dark color uh, because that gives us the opportunity to build on the value of that tree, and we're going to simply put that tree in right about here. and a little smaller brush size and you can maybe create a little trunk coming off the side here. Make that a little bit narrower down there at the bottom. And we'll come back to our fire trees and we'll do a little filling in there and just to show a little overlapping dark as you move away from the fire. And lighter where you know that fire is going to have some impact on your painting.
then we'll go back to the two inch blender and again we're just going to soften and pull out that area this is the area we're going to create our fire we're going to select the detail brush now and we're going to pick up kind of a mid color here and pull that out and we're going to start creating that area where our fire is going to go. So it's going to be somewhere right around in here. And we definitely want to have a place where our little cowboy is going to be sitting. I use this brush also to add a little bit of highlight effect on the side of the tree. Another brush you can use for that is the painting knife and that gives you a real nice effect. You can go from dark to light. It's a very oily brush so it can really instill some nice texture in the side of the tree. And you would just want to run it up and down and then sample the darker value and go back over some of those lighter values. to emphasize that glow on the side of the tree. And we'll run that right down into this area. Do some more texturizing on our tree. Making sure that those values hold. Now a lot of the detail work you can do towards the end where you might want to go in and add some more branches to your tree. And it's all yours. Have fun with it. Now we're going to pull out a little bit of a land plane right here and we'll just let that kind of curve around to the side and we're going to create that look of a little bit of a pond coming around this area here. And all this you can do very simply, just pulling in line until you're ready to fill it in. Okay, we'll take our fire tree brush and we'll start to use that to fill in this lower area and just to give you the look of um, some additional foliage along the side of the pond. And don't forget your values. You can use a combination of light and dark here. and we'll do some additional blending here in a bit. Any place it's affected by the glow of the fire, so we always have to be thinking of that. And you can start to fill that in a little, This this lower area with a little more foliage. Just keep your values nice and dark towards the back. And then we'll do some additional painting into this area quickly. The brush we'll use to paint our Little Cowboy is going to be the detail brush and we'll make sure it's 
kind of on the small side here. Now, if you're feeling a little insecure about drawing people, it's not always that easy, add a layer. And that way you can really experiment, do a few little sketches here and see how things come together for you, whether you like it or not. And I'm going to make sure that I'm just on the simple paper here, the default paper, because we don't want a lot of texture in this part of the painting. And our little cowboy's kind of leaning up against the tree. Our little cowboy's leaning up against the tree, so we want to, you know, take into consideration the the posture that he would be sitting under. And let's see if we can get something in that works here. It's kind of leaning towards the fire. You can follow the contour of the tree to develop the line work that you need and to show his leg. So the tree makes it a little bit easier for you to follow that contour and to get him sitting in the tree correctly. Um, use your Alt key to sample color. You know, if you need to go in and refine edges. I'd like to see this top of the hat a little flatter and the brim maybe a little rounder. And his arm is kind of sitting, comes down and then it's sitting right on his knee here. You want to go nice and dark with this, with your cowboy. And just continue to refine it until you get it about the way you want it. I'd like to see his arm come up a little bit higher there. Something like that. And this might take a while before you get it exactly the way you like it. But keep working on it. There we go. We'll leave it at that. And I'm just going to bring the use that same brush and I'm just going to fill in this area a little bit here with a darker value. Still looking not complete yet and that's okay. We still have a long way to go. And now we'll pick up the this brush called the Oil Brush Texturizer and I'm going to use that just to go into this area here and develop that side of the pond 
This is a beautiful oily brush. Pick up a few other colors. Watch your size, you know, change your brush size a little bit. Just going to let some of that color come right into the water, and I'll show you why in a second. And then we're going to pull some of those nice bright colors. And again, we're remembering that we're going to start our fire right about in here, have our, our campfire. And this part of it, just, just have fun with, you know. Pull some different values into the water. I'm going to go back and pick up the fire trees again. And I want to do a little bit more texturizing right in this area here. And I'll go back. Let's go ahead and drop that layer now. Nice and bright in here. I'm going to take the two-inch blender and we're going to just pull these reflections down into the water and we're going to start creating some water here some nice reflections so just pull those nice and long right from the shore right down into the pond and then a little smaller brush, very soft pressure. We'll go back over those reflections, and we're just going to subtly create that look of some water reflections in the water here. We'll pick up the oil brush texturizer and I am going to do some very bright color here. This will be kind of a fire color. This happens to be the cad cadmium yellow. And I'm going to pull some of that right into the water in a couple of spots. We're going to go back to our painting knife brush, nice dark color here, and we're going to paint in the look of some logs on the fire. And, and do go nice and dark uh, with this value. With these, uh, you want to get a real nice dark color here. And you can use the oil brush, that'll work fine. But you can also experiment with a brush that has a little more, um, a little more uh, saturation to it, and try, you know, the detail brush is a good one. The deal you want here is some really nice, good contrast. I'm going to put a little bit of glow right on his top of his hat. Just so he's got some glow on him from the fire. Then let's have some fun with the fire and choose the campfire glow brush. I'm going to use a nice fire color there and put in some and of course you can always go to different colors and have some fun so 
we got our fire going now and let's add some fire sparks so we'll use a nice light color there and just pull those right up I like just for that extra I don't know it just to me it just adds some extra magic and just let those sparks fly right up into the trees then we'll pick up the two inch blender and we're going to do some more blending here very softly again pull down from the edge and let's get some bright reflections into this water very softly and then vertical little smaller brush little more pressure and you get a nice glow going the rest of the painting really is yours to explore you know you have to decide you know do I want to add some more elements more reflections I like using the um, painting knife here to add some additional reflections I may pick up this color here nice small brush maybe do this kind of thing along the edge it's always nice to enhance the edge of the pond Keep the magic going by adding your own unique details to the painting. Go back in, add details where you need. Um, pick up the fire tree again and do some additional ad uh, adding of trees and foliage around the campfire. Strengthen your values if you feel like things have gotten too dark or too light. And um, one little trick, um, one little tip, I think that is a nice little effect to add to a painting like this to bring it all together in terms of value. Add a new layer and set that layer to either multiply or gel and go over to your digital uh, airbrush and choose the digital soft airbrush and then create, uh, sample one of your darker values here and then create a nice little vignette towards the bottom and very softly at the top of the painting. And do that on a layer so you can control the opacity if it gets uh, too dark on you, okay? You, this, this little trick um, adds a really nice um, feeling of bringing a little more continuity to the painting. Uh, the darker value focuses and moves the eye more towards the uh, center of interest. You know, this is your painting, so you can have fun with it. Um, if you want to, um, for example, maybe you want to uh, go back into your, your fire, and maybe you want to add even, you know, more fire coming out of here. You know, use the right color be a nice orange here would be pretty and really make that fire glow <laughs> so remember it's all yours uh, the little details at the end are what really count um, you know even taking the the um, campfire sparks and maybe adding a few little textures here and there to emulate the look of bugs flying at night or fireflies you probably wouldn't see fireflies all that well in a dark environment or a light environment like this where there's so much reflective light but it's still those little things add a lot to the magic of your painting and bring a little extra to it so i hope you enjoyed this and um, i i look forward to seeing what you come up with take care one more supplemental to this video that I'd like to add to um, 
as another little trick that you can do to emphasize and bring out really dramatic lighting in your painting. Um, this holds together pretty well. It has some good dramatic lighting, but you can even go a little further on this. So by adding a new layer, selecting a very dark color, and you can see about where I am here, and then filling it, Command F, we're going to go ahead and fill that with that current color. And I'm going to take this all the way up to 100% and you can see how dark that is. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring the opacity down just a bit on this painting to the point where I can still see the foliage coming through, the fire, but the light has been pretty much diminished. So what I want to do now is bring that light in again. So all I'm going to do here is select the eraser, eraser and I'm going to very softly, and my opacity is set to about 35% on this brush, and I'm very lightly going to start to bring in a glow around this area and take it right up through the trees and let it just glow in this area here. Very soft pressure, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this brush right now. This is the area I want to bring focus to. Then I'm very softly going to pull a little bit of that glow right down into the pond. Very gently, very softly. And then just capture some of the edges of the foliage. Again, you're remembering this is a dark environment and we're only wanting to capture certain parts of the light here. But notice how you still get a beautiful glow coming through with your foliage as you move back. So this really enhances the fire area and creates some lovely light. So this is a little trick you might want to try. And it's also a beautiful effect for your general landscape painting when you're wanting to create something very dramatic in terms of light. And don't go overboard with it. Be very gentle, be very strategic where you let that light come through. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Take care.